Hello, maestros, and welcome. If you haven't gotten an external input device yet, you're in luck, because this episode I'll be showing you how to stay efficient without one by using the conflict palettes with the floating palettes. And I'm going to show you all this by showing you the iTunes macro, how to keep most, if not all, your songs within fingertip reach. All right, there are two ways of doing this. First is the prompt way. So you can have a little prompt here that when you activate, then you can enter in the name of the song that you want. Now, the first problem you come into is the play track action problem, which is you need actually to have the full track name in order for it to work. And when you talk about efficiency, it isn't, it isn't very efficient to type in a full track name. So you can type in just abbreviations here. Let's type abbreviation of guns, enter, boom, pretty good. Now I set this up by having a little repeat action here, just acting as a folder that contains my if then actions. So if any of the following true, the variable name is guns, set itself, set the variable name. So set the variable name itself to guns and horses, the full track name. And then with that set, it can then play correctly and it works pretty good. Now, this action works well if you just have a few songs, because then you wouldn't have to remember a whole bunch of abbreviations. Instead, when you have a whole bunch of songs, you should use the conflict palettes here. You can see the conflict palettes that activate the individual groups here that then you have access to your individual songs within the albums. All right, set this up. The first thing you want to do is create a new group. You can see here I have album one. And within this album, you can see that I changed. And normally it's set to always active, activated, but we want to switch it over to shows a palette for one action when. So this way, so that when we create this macro, we can just set it up so that it just has a simple hotkey, just like L here, or Command L, something like that, and just place a track. So, so do the same thing for the other, your other albums. You can see up in front here, a nice little abbreviation as a reminder for what shortcut was assigned to this macro. All right, so now you have your albums, your, your groups, and you can keep the, or you can set up with the status menu entries clicked. So in case um, you have a little problem of macros still activating, even though the palette isn't shown, you can just open it up real quick and then disable it. And you shouldn't have that problem again. So next, next step is to create the macro that opens up the individual groups. You can always set up with, you can set set up with the hotkey here, but I find that it isn't, it's not as aesthetically pleasing because then you can't use this little icon within the palette and it doesn't look as nice. So we can just use the individual macros to activate each of these groups. So create a new macro, command and make a new macro and I'll just call it test album. Open up your action list, search for macro, and then you'll find near the bottom here, show slash hide macro group. Drag that on in, change the first setting from show slash hide to show palette for one action, meaning when you activate it, it will show the palette and then it will close the palette when one action has been triggered. And then set the macro group here to the corresponding macro group. And that's pretty much it. So then when you activate it, you go boom, album one, and then L. Pretty nice, I do it again. I'll do it again, album 2W. Good to go. So yeah, that's how you become the master of your iTunes library. Hopefully you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.